Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, live from Harlem in New York City. Yeah, it's Alex and it's the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, over there, it's Albert Reynoso. Hi. Hi, Albert. How you doing, Val? Good. Thank you. you doing okay? I'm doing fine. Yeah? All right. Okay. Um, and I'm uh, trying to see here. Um, do, you hear my, do you hear my air conditioning at all? I hear some kind of, of um, breezy sounding, like a very low, but no, I don't hear. Oh, you don't hear it? Oh, okay. Not bad. I've got this new, co new control board. It's a new mixer. Mm -hmm. It's a road mixer. Yeah. And it's just spectacular. But there's so many things you have to set. You know, uh -huh. so okay. anyway, yeah. How yeah. many inputs and outputs? Tell how, me all how about many it. How many inputs and outputs I got? I, I don't know. Six. Six? Yeah. Well, I got ten over here. Really? Yeah, but you don't uh, have what I got. Which is what? Uh, well, I can't show you unless I move the camera. I can move the camera and I can show you. Tell me you. what it is. You can well, tell me. Wait a minute. Here, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, let you're me, losing your green screen. Oh, man. Let me see here. Where is it? People are going to know the secret. Oh, there it is. Wizard. See? Oh, that's very nice. Oh, you have you have buttons. Yeah, I have some of those, too. I never use them. Yeah, this is very good. Anyway, let me... Uh, playback. I have six playback hmm? buttons. Never use them, never will. You have six playbacks? You know, instant, instant replay buttons. Oh, really? Yeah, I have, well, I have a whole bunch of buttons, and I can program as many as I need to program on it. Isn't that great? Technology is Yeah, uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I got... Alex Bennett is still alive? See? Yeah, but he didn't make it, did he? Huh? You're still here, but he didn't I, make I, it. He didn't make it, no. Uh, no. Yeah. So, anyway, you know. Well, that's nice. New toys for Alex. Yeah, new toys for Alex. Anyway, so, and you don't notice anything else. I noticed that uh, you have a very uh, close shave on the head, and you are missing the little uh, goatee part That's of your, right. Uh, your beard. That's right. Your mustache is still there. Have I noticed everything now? Is that, huh? is that good? Am I, am I aware of everything now? Y yeah, I guess you are. Okay, good. Okay. So. All right, see you later. Okay. Uh, let me see. How do I, do I have, uh, um, I have to see here. If I have, uh, oh, here, that's what's wrong. The processing isn't on, oh, on the mic. Wait a minute, I know it's off now. Now, and, and then now it's on. Hmm. You'll be sure to let me know how many people will uh, be tuned into this very uh, interesting conversation we're having. Well, I can't figure out. Because I wouldn't be, I know that. Huh? I wouldn't be listening to this at all. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, good for you. <laughs> there we go. I I just got rid of the background noise. Okay. There good. we go. Okay, I feel great now. Good. Well, good. this is what happens when you get a new piece of equipment. You gotta learn how to use it. But why? I don't understand. We have AI. You should just tell the it, AI. You, you know what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna I, use I, the microphone. I agree Fix with it. you. There should be one button I push and it sets everything. Well, my mixer has that. I can I can set all the parameters. I can set maybe six different programs, customized programs for different ways. Oh yeah, I'm... I can do that too. Of course you can. Yeah, and uh, it also. Uh, but this is a noise gate that I had to set oh, to okay, keep the yeah. background noise from showing up. Now you don't hear it anymore, right? I, oh, I know what it is. It's my fans on my computer that I hear. That's what I hear. No, I don't hear anything on your end. I didn't hear any gulping just now or any, any sloshing <laughs> of the soda. Anyway, so here's what happened with my beard. Okay? So the other day, I'm, I'm in the bathroom, and I'm shaving. Uh -huh. And I've got, you know, you've got the, the, on the shaver, 
you know this, you have a guard you put on there for the length you want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Boom, boom, boom. Uh-oh, so I, I, had, I had that on, and I did the shaving. <laughs> and then I take it off to trim things, uh-huh. okay, to get, you know, get it all trimmed up. Uh-huh. And so I got it all trimmed up, and uh, I'm, at one point I see a little problem, so I go, broom, uh-huh. and it takes a big chunk out of my beard. Yeah. Now, what's well. better, doing this, <laughs> right, and letting it grow back, or, uh, or, or just leaving the chunk out of my beard? I don't think we want to leave the chunk out of my beard. Well, you could have sculpted it so, so it would uh, look even, but have it grow back and have most of the beard. You know what there. I could have done? It was right here. I could have done this. Yeah, and done one soul of the, patch. Huh? A soul well, patch. Well, I have a soul patch, but okay. to get rid of this part right here, uh, you know, and then, I don't know. Yeah. yeah well, it'll, it'll be back in two weeks. You think so? Fine, yes, yes. Not like it was. It will take a, more time for that, but... You know, of course, uh, you know what I can do, uh, you know, there's a little thing you can do with uh, our um, wonderful thing here called Zoom. Uh, they have some uh, things that would solve the problem. And oh, you can put facial huh? thing. You can put masks on. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? There we go. I don't see anything. You don't, you don't see anything? Let me turn it off. I don't see anything. And I'll turn it back on. Yeah? Here, no, let. just Alex Bennett. Still the same guy. Hmm? I don't see anything different. You don't see anything different? I hmm. don't know. Hmm. Because if I turn it off, I go, well, anyway, forget it. Oh. Forget it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Oh. Yeah. It'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. So. Don't worry about it. Anyway, you know. Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, what's happening with you down there? Nothing. Nothing. Finally no. getting some rain, some, some appreciable rain. Nothing happening down in Florida, huh? Not outside of the usual, you know, yeah. silly things that goes on. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you, you know. are going up. Uh, uh, huh? The heat, climate craziness, the same stuff. How as, ma- as what's the heat going. like down there? Uh, it's a wet heat. It's a wet heat. You know how is how they always say, well, it's 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 very hot, but it's a dry heat. No, this is a wet heat. Yeah, this it, it, no, it's very really bad. It's you no, can't people keep, don't like a wet heat. You can't keep a crease in your pants. No, no. It's, a, it's, a, it's a wet heat. It's not fun, but nobody goes out, so it doesn't matter. You go out, you play pickleball in the morning, you play pickleball in the after in the evening, and that's it. And Why that, pickleball? Isn't that just like you're uh, playing table tennis, but you're on a large table tennis table no it's like you're playing tennis but you're on a smaller tennis court that's what it is it doesn't look like tennis you got a ball with air in it it's it's very much like tennis no it's it, it they play it like tennis but it, it's non-impact you just tennis. said it they play it like tennis so they it's, play it it's like tennis. tennis but it's non-impact tennis yeah well you want to have a game you see how how uh, Im- non-impact it is Believe me, I couldn't play any game these days. That's true. You can, you can. I'll, I'll use a cane as well. We'll both use canes, and and we'll, uh, we'll play pickleball. We'll, we'll play pickleball. Yeah, three-legged pickleball. Three-legged pickleball. It's a new thing. It's a, the the new pickleball. Three-legged pickleball. Really? Oh well. Okay. Um, you know, I uh, do. You, you actually play pickleball? I mean, you're you're a big pickleball. P- 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 no, I don't. I don't play at all. I have player. played. Huh? Huh? You're a big. Pi- uh, see, I'm moving myself. A big pickleball player? No, I I have played. We have some courts over here, uh, and uh, a lot of people play, but I don't play. I, I'm I'm a kid from Queens. Now, you know, is I, pickleball I like, like for old people? No, it's not. It's very much not. A pickleball is is for anybody, and like you said, it's lower impact than tennis. It's a, a less of a footprint for the courts, so you can have a lot more courts in the space of tennis courts, and a lot more people can play. Yeah, but what and, what, what did they do? Fast. What did they do to create the pickleball courts? They converted tennis courts, didn't they? Well, you can make it anywhere. You don't even have to convert anything. <laughs> take the shuffleball courts out that nobody uses and make a pickleball court out of it. 
Hmm. Mm -hmm. Or bocce. Bocce. We have bocce here too. Very few people play bocce. Very few people play shuffleboard. Bocce ball is like an Italian thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you throw a ball and you try to knock the other ball out of the way or something. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, um, bowling and billiards combined, something like that. Except no, no. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I guess billiards, not pool, billiards. Is that an old people sport? Bocce. Yeah. I well, no, I don't. I don't know. I used to play it in in New York. There was a uh, a restaurant on the uh, Upper East Side that had bocce courts. I think in the basement or something, and I used to go and play there. Wow, that's nice. It's a calm game. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I thought it was just like the old Italians played bocce ball. I'm sure there are a, a good number of old Italians that play bocce, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. If you yeah. want to be a racist, you can say that. Yeah. It, so know. the weather is how hot is it? How <laughs> how hot is it's it? It's so hot. I saw it's a show, it's I, so hot. Out in Central Park, I saw a, uh, a squirrel putting lotion on his nuts. Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, it's 90, 90 plus degrees, mm -hmm. and then the wet heat. That's right now, it. right now here in New York, it's eighty eight degrees. All right. Now I, the time you got the time too because you got to do the time and the temperature. Well, right break. now it, it happens to be one fifteen here in New York. You got to have that sounder. And Eighty-eight degrees. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Maybe I. Oh have yeah, a sound you have effect. you have sound effects. Yeah. Go ahead. Throw uh, it in. Uh, let me see. It's uh, it's uh, eighty-eight degrees. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Do I have anything? <laughs> I don't know how these work. Let me see if I can get this to work. Hang on a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what I have in here. I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Push the button, I guess. All right. Did, did you hear that? I, yeah, No. But you no. see, here's the thing with... with, I, with I just um, turned all this off. Hold on. Here's the thing with Zoom. I try to play music to you, and you probably won't hear it. That's correct. See, let me play some music here. Do you hear this? I know, but I'm not supposed to hear it because you need a, an internal mixer in your computer. Then you can. Then I can hear it. Internal mixer in my computer? Yeah. To, to hear audio that goes out to Zoom, you need a, a mixer in your computer that will send things out just the same way it sends out the microphone. Sends, sends it out on a different line in the computer. No, but, I, but you just heard this. Wait a minute. You just heard this. Come on. I don't. Well, that's not working. No, it's not at all. Oh, here we go. There we go. Alex Bennett is still alive? You heard uh, that. That's funny. Yes, I heard that. See? And you hear this. This is a test for the next 60 seconds. But you can't hear. Hi, I'm Robin Lee. You hear that? Champagne wishes and caviar I, dreams. I can hear it. And you're listening to the incredible, the memorable, the wonderful, the one and only Alex Bennett. That's right? lovely. But I'm saying that it, it that lets certain things through and it doesn't let others through. And yeah, I think it has to do with no, we, copyright material, or what they perceive to be copywritten material. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, because didn't why would it play my, uh, my uh, Gilbert, and you could hear it, okay, and let me turn this down so that it, it doesn't go out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Why could you hear... Alex Bennett is still alive? You just heard that, right? Did, yes. I yeah, did. but you don't hear... Don't hear that, do you? Uh, I heard bits, you know, a little bit of it, yeah. Yeah, but it, what, that's what it does. It, you know, I mean, this is feeding my audio and, you, and all the audio into Zoom and also into my recording device, which is OBS. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be censoring it, but it has to do, there's some kind of censoring going on. It's weird. It's really weird. Technology is weird. Yeah, it is weird. And I hate for them to make a choice of what I can play and let you hear and what well, I, you know, and what I want you to hear. 
and, and have them make the decision that I can't let you hear it. Well, then get off Zoom and create your own thing. Maybe there's something else where you can play the music. I don't know. But this is, you know. Well, if you, if you set up your own, well, on GabNet, you can play whatever well, you want, question, except for the fact that they can come, come after you and sue you. My for, question is, why should, why should Zoom even care? Because they don't want to get sued. They can't, they can't get sued. They're, they, 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 there are certain laws that don't make them responsible for what somebody does with their stuff. Okay. Well, they may not, they may not lose the suit, but they don't want to get sued. Because if everybody sued them for every piece of audio or video that another person owns, then they'd be in lawsuits. No, but I'm playing it. How can they be sued? Because it's their platform. There's the thing, I forget what it's called now, in the law, where, for instance, if somebody does something illegal on Zoom, Zoom is not responsible in any oh. way, shape, or form. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what, what it was called. They, they used to give it to the uh, cable companies, too, so that when it came to shows like public access shows, they could not be held responsible for what went on on the public access shows. I don't, I don't know the, the law that well. Yeah, that well. yeah. Well, in this case, what is Zoom doing? They're determining what I can let you hear and not let you hear. And quite frankly, that sucks, especially when I'm paying $160 a year for the goddamn service. You know? Yeah, you should get the free one then. Use the, the free, free one. one's only 20 minutes, 40 minutes. And I need at least an How hour. How much more do you need? You're too, you're too connected. I do my shows every uh, three nights a week uh, for an hour. And one on Monday for an hour. I need, I need the uh, unlimited. And you use Zoom every night? Well, on uh, 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 Wednesdays, Thursdays, and oh, Fridays, right, yeah. and then on Mondays. Well, you got to go back to Skype, man. Skype never had these problems. Skype had a lot more problems, yeah, right. I got to right. tell you. Couldn't, couldn't hear anything. That was the problem. I've never Skype. had, I basically never had um, anything go wrong with Zoom. Yeah. Okay. And it's been a couple of years now. What is it? The the, the uh, pandemic was in twenty, so it's like four years now. You don't think Skype's caught up yet to the to the? I looked at them. They haven't caught up. They're not they're not as easy to deal with. You know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And and no, nobody else has a service that's as that's as good as uh, as easy to do as Zoom. Um, there may be others, but mm. since they don't have the reach, you know. Other people may go, I don't know how to do that one. You know, I don't have that one on my computer, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Zoom's got the advantage here. And a great name, let's face it. Come on, Zoom? What's better than but that? It's not a great name because what is, it doesn't say anything about what the product is. It sounds like it should be an airplane or something. Fine, though. It's Zoom. Let's go on Zoom. Let's Skype. Let's yeah. Skype. Let's Zoom. Let's Skype. Yeah. We want to go on Skype. Let's Zoom instead. Yeah. We're going to Zoom. Forget about Skype. <laughs> Forget about Skype. Anyway, so, um, uh, so anyway, so, uh, you know, I mean, um, it, it, it's been really hot here. It's been really hot around the country. I mean, you, you, you agree there is global warming going on, don't you? No, I agree there's climate change going on, but that's going on all the time. All the time. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the climate changes. Yeah, but it isn't just heat that I'm talking about. Wildfires, changes, wildfires yeah. tornadoes, uh, all that have been far more vicious now than they've ever been. Trying to get rid of the humans. The earth doesn't want the humans anymore. Well, that I agree with. Got to get rid you of know, them. Because people don't realize we're so egotistical. Well, we can uh, put carbon up in the air and we can do this and we can do that. No, nature will survive. Beyond anything, yeah, nature yeah. will survive. And even at the expense of you. Okay. Here's a, here's a bigger egotistical claim. We're going to be able to fix it. <laughs> no, you're not. Forget about your footprint. Forget about what you're doing to conserve and, and uh, what, what do they call it now? Um, um, it's replenishable or uh, we, can, we can keep it going. Forget about it. It's past that point. 
we've we've passed that point. Any any adult or 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 or, or younger person who believes that, forget it. It's past that point. And and even if it weren't, nobody's doing anything to change it. So so forget it. The the little the uh, kid from Norway, forget it. It's not going to happen. Or she's got to be like twenty or thirty now. This right? is Greta Thunberg or what? Greta, Greta Thunberg, yeah. Thun, yeah. Yeah. And she is she still a thing? Or well, did she say? She well, forget it. I can't. I mean, it's not going to happen. Forget it. Well, it became her life's work. And it's a, and it's a a a, a, a very uh, notable, admirable, a, admirable thing. But you're dealing with humans. Forget it, man. And yeah. and worse than that, you're dealing with people who are worse than humans. And you know who those people are? Corporations. Oh, oh God. They're even worse than humans. They're the worst people on the planet. And they're not going to change. So forget it. Enjoy your enjoy your hurricanes, enjoy your tornadoes, enjoy your tsunamis, enjoy because that's what's going to happen. Get get a good umbrella, you know the golf type that doesn't fold back up. <laughs> um, get some galoshes or whatever they're called now, wellies, and uh, enjoy it because this is what's going to be. Wellies. Yeah, Wellington boots. Wellington boots. Okay. I did just did something by accident that I, I always yell at people for doing. Showing their microphones on podcasts. Nah. They make a big deal out of it. See my microphone? See what a great big microphone I've got? You know. So, yeah. Oh. I, I, so I accidentally had it up like this. So. How dare you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know, folks. I apologize. Happening? Anyway, so, um, uh, you know, the weather down there, I mean, in Florida, it gets pretty brutal. You know? But it always has. You know where it gets brutal? When I lived in Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, That's that, a dry heat. Huh? That's a dry heat. No, it's humid. Oh, is it? Oh, know. yeah, yeah. As I, I said, you, it, in, the, in the summer, you could never keep a crease in your pants, you know. It's a wet, wet heat like we have here. It's a wet heat. Wet yeah. heat. Now, uh, uh, where do they say Arizona always goes? Oh well, but it's yeah. a dry heat. Dry heat. Yeah, it's not as bad because it's dry heat. It's a dry <laughs> heat, and I go, yeah, it's a dry heat. Good. That's terrific. It's still hot. Yeah, I looked at the temperature in Phoenix. It was 119 the other day, and I'm going, what? yeah, it's dry heat. Good. I'm fine. Go out, stand out there if it's so dry. I don't see the big deal. And there's a lot of New Yorkers down here, and they're complain they complain about it all the time. But when I lived in New York in the heat of the summer, 96, 97, 98, 99 at times, occasionally above 100. And um, that's the way it was. It's, it's no, not much different from down here. You know here. That, that beginning and, and, of like... Yes, uh, summer in the summer city. Summer in the city. That's how it summer, feels. Yes. That's, that's how the way it feels, it feels yes. <laughs> that... Um, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Can you play that, or will Zoom restrict that? Zoom will restrict that. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. But but you're absolutely. You, I know you've always had the same feeling I did. That that was if you were to describe to people what heat in New York City is like, that's it. Yeah. You know, that's it. Uh, it, it, it is. Uh, it's just. Uh, and and also. The, we also have a lot of cement in this town mm -hmm. in the form of sidewalks and streets, and it radiates off that. And that's why New York gets especially hot. If we had grass out there instead of, you know, cement, it'd be much better. And that's why people go out to the parks, because they're cooler because they got grass out there. Is it because of the grass or because there's no buildings holding it, holding holding the heat in those little street pockets. Yeah, well, I mean, whatever it is in New York City, there are a lot of things that get make it feel hotter than it really is. And then we but, get the humidity. Marjorie and I, this is true, we move into the back end of our apartment, mm -hmm. close the door yeah. there that goes down the hallway, and we live in the back with the air conditioning on because... The living room, the dining room, and so on is so humid and so hot. And the people say, well, why don't you turn on the air conditioners? I can only turn on a certain amount of air conditioners right. at one time without blowing fuses downstairs. 
So it's like I have to, I have like a par portion how much air conditioning. Otherwise, I'd have air conditioning in every window and have them running full blast, even if it's costing me a fortune. And yet I'm looking at you and you're sitting in your living room doing this program. Yes, isn't that amazing? Why would you do that? Go to the back of the house. Go to the back of the apartment where it's nice and cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you know, I you could... Need, you need to get a background with the back of the apartment on it. So with the you back can, of the apartment. Yeah, so you can say I'm, in, I'm at the back of the apartment. Well, we could the, do that. All I have yeah. to do is take down the green screen and I'm in the back of the and apartment. And you're in the back of the apartment. Yeah. And I've told you, I like, I like that... that uh, wall of DVDs a lot better than I like the living room, but I, I it, it's conducive more to, to to doing programs. I think the Do, wall. Of you DVDs. think so? I I always well, you're the so. producer. Yeah. Not of this, but you're the producer. I've been told. Yeah. So if you were the producing the show, you'd have me drop the background. Probably. Yeah. 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 Ditch the background. Yeah. yeah. Stick with the, stick with the uh, studio look. I okay. like that. Better. I see. Well, this is this is I have this is the daytime now, which I put up when I'm interviewing you because outside your window, it's daytime. daytime. Okay, so uh, if I have if I have the other one that's the nighttime one, and I'm talking to you, it doesn't make much sense. Well, you could say you've gone to Europe for the day. Really? Why not? Hmm. So anyway, well, you're taking a vacation soon, aren't you? Am I? Yeah. By the way, you know something? We've run over. Oh, well, too bad. I don't care. See ya. But I just looked and I, yeah, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> you can close this down. We'll, we'll do another one next week or so. I think we will in about, okay. about a minute and a half or something. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Albert. Uh, you know, I, I can't believe I didn't even look at the time. Albert yeah. Reynoso, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! In the wet heat. Now in its 10th year, this is Gadnet. Talk like you've never heard it before. I got to turn my... <laughs> I forgot to turn my microphone on. Oh, well. I'm still learning how to use all this. You know, it's... Uh, it, whatever. Anyway, uh, we have uh, air conditioning going on today. I've got the air conditioner on full blast. Uh, and uh, I think I've got to do something here. Hold on. Excuse me. I'm still trying to get this thing all set so that it's right. But if I, if I cut this off, then you'll hear, the, you'll hear that. But uh, I'm trying to. There's a thing called a noise gate here. And uh, if you uh, turn it down, the threshold on it, there we, there we go. No, no, there we go. There, there. How's that? How's that? Is that better? Okay. I had something last night that was a real problem. And the problem last night was that I had a thing called the compressor, and I had it on too much. And I don't, I don't know if this is, this is doing a problem. This has got a problem, too. Here. I don't know what to do. You know, I, it, all I know is that it, uh, it, uh, um, you know, it. Uh, I'm trying to make make this thing so that it works right, and I I can't do it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Is that better? Is that better? I don't know. How about that? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? I don't know. I can't. Uh, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to. You see, I'm trying to keep it so that it has a noise gate. That's a little better. All right. That's fine. I think we got that down a little better. Uh, let me see here. Um, we got a whole bunch of people waiting to come on. Wow. Jeez. We got uh, Charlie Wallace here, and we got. Uh, let me see here. Who else? Uh, we got Charlie Wallace, and we got uh, 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 oh, Josh is back again tonight, and uh, Bree is with us from uh, uh, the uh, the Far East. Hello there, Bree. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, good. And uh, I'm. Uh, do I sound okay, everybody? Yeah. 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 Last night I was kind of say hello, Alan. 
Oh, hi, Alan. Uh, yeah, I was <laughs> pumping a lot last night. I'm not pumping tonight at all. I sound okay to you? So far. Okay. We'll let you know. So far, yeah. All right. And also, I have the noise gate established here. So, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what it is. But anyway, so hello to everybody. How are you? Good. Doing good. Okay. So we had something a little important tonight. Uh, we had the... Uh, uh, our, our president of the United States uh, giving a, um, um, let me see here, hold on a second, I got to admit uh, Jeffrey, and then there's somebody called Melanin Faith who doesn't even exist, so they can go fuck themselves, so they can just wait there, okay? All right. Uh, hmm? Mel who doesn't even exist so they can go fuck themselves so <laughs> wait a minute who's that Jeff I think it's Jeff oh Jeff I'm no. okay you alright now Jeff I'm uh -huh. yeah oh, okay okay and let's see your whole face too anyway oh, I'll do that yeah. where was I anyway uh, so um, uh, what was I what was I talking I was going to say something and then I I uh, for, oh, yes. Okay. All right. Is a guy, I think he was the president. Yeah. President yeah. of the United States tonight gave a press conference. Did anybody see that? Yes. What I were, did. Uh, my, my comment at the very end of the, of the press conference was, well, we're all fucked. Again? <laughs> wow. Hmm? I, I'm sorry. You know, did you watch it tonight, Charlie? No, no, I was on the road. I just got here. You just where are you again? I'm in Chicago now. You're in Chicago, okay. Yeah. Did you watch it tonight, Josh? Oh uh, yeah, yeah I did. Would you agree with me that we're all fucked? Well, I don't know that I would agree with that because that indicates that there's nothing you can do about something. So uh I don't know that I would agree that there's nothing that can be done. Mm hmm But you know, I don't think the I don't think the press conference is going over real well, you know, and I don't think that it stopped anybody from thinking the things that they've been thinking for the last, you know, whatever it is, two weeks. You know, I don't think it assuaged anybody's uh, nervousness or whatever. And, you know, and, and I think that it showed what I said, which was mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing and he knows things very well and he's very capable of being president but he's not very capable at running for president yeah yeah you i know, think because that's being president and keeping the nation running and safe really doesn't require a person to stand at a podium and answer questions from rude or stupid reporters it that's not really the job. The job is to go over here and do the substantive things that it takes. But didn't you, he can didn't, do that? Yeah. He's not very good at the audience. But didn't stuff. you oh. feel in listening to him like it was like your, uh, oh, I don't know, your old eighty-year-old uncle at the Thanksgiving dinner table, telling you uh, what it was like long know. ago? I mean, I don't know if I'd put it like that. He's he, he just, he's just not very good at that mm -hmm. setup. He's just, you know, he's just not, you know? I mean, I, I think that if he sat in a room without the cameras and he had to, and he was talking to another world leader, you know, one-on-one -on -one in the private room, I'm sure that it's fine. And, and from all indications that we've gotten, even with all the leaks and all that stuff now, that's what people say is that it's fine. He's just not great at the you know, the high spectacle moment, you know, so, you know, because he's not, mm -hmm. putting, you know, because putting on a show and being president are two totally different, they're two totally different things, you my, know. By the way, I have to apologize to the audience. It was my, my face was up for the last five minutes instead of the uh, Zoom. I'm, I'm out of it lately with this. <laughs> I'm going you know, to so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not... I mean, it's not good. It's not. It's not doing anything else to help people, you know, feel better. And I mean, I get polling info and all that, but you know, I, I just think that. Do you think he's capable of winning an election? 
I don't know if he's capable of winning. You know, I, I don't. I mean, I certainly think he's capable of governing. Yeah. Yes. I don't think that he's capable of winning because I don't think that most Americans uh, are able to look at that kind of stuff. I don't think they. <clears throat> You know, Americans overall, when they vote, are really not all that well informed, or they don't really think about it that deeply. To be honest with you, they're not very good at picking competent people to lead in government. Which well, is how I mean, we it's, up with it's the people it, that we have. That's very obvious by the fact that in any other time in our uh, in our history, mm-hmm. um, we would never have allowed a Donald Trump to exist. Mm-hmm. Or, all right. But we thought better of ourselves than that. You know, so... Uh, well, we certainly let it come into the mainstream, you know, much more so than we would have. Uh, so, you know, I, I just don't... I mean, in all honesty, you know, probably what needs to happen is you need to get a good a, a change in their strategy and they need to do it and then stick with it. And I think they could defeat Trump in, in with that. You know, I mean, he's probably more vulnerable than any other candidate in quite some time because he, you know, for as much as he has hardcore supporters, he's not liked by a lot of people. And by a lot, I mean, majority. I mean, the polling, you know, tells you that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but you know what? Where he is, people, you know? people come along with this attitude that we only have two people to choose from. Right. You know, and and that being the case, two people to choose from, they don't feel that they can maybe not vote for Donald Trump. And if they don't like Joe Biden, not vote for him either. Just don't vote. Yeah. You That's know? not really going to help anything. That's, I don't know no, what's going to help. I don't know what's going to help anything. Bree? I, mean, the, the, I mean, I would like for him to be president again. He's very capable. I've been a longtime supporter. You and I talked about this last week off the air. Was very involved with Joe Biden before it was ever cool, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, really, the, what 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 they need to do to me is for the good of the country, for the good of the people, and for the good of the office of the presidency. I think the President Obama, I think the President Clinton, and I really think the President Bush. All need to have a conversation with him about what's good for the country, what's good for the presidency, and what's good for Western democracy as we know it today. Mm-hmm. You know, what's what's good for the legacy of Churchill, of FDR, of all the people that came after them? You know, our job, your job, was to maintain that way of life for the Western world. You've done that. Served honorably, I know. You know, I think your duty is done. I mean, you, you just you, can't you, go you, all nine innings tonight. You, you just you've done do your duty to your country. What you did yeah. was you became exactly what you said you were going to be, which was an interim pe- president, right. right? That was going to be there until the next president comes along, right? And and then you would back off. Uh, I think he stuck to that plan. He would have been in great shape. Somebody else would have gotten the nomination for the Democratic Party. It probably would have been somebody who certainly could beat the pants off Trump. You know, but right now you've got a guy who's in a very weakened position, and I just don't know that he can beat Donald Trump. You know, and I, I agree with you. Western democracy is at stake here, and he should be made to feel that he would be doing a greater service to that democracy if he didn't run yeah i understand you know and i don't want to be the only one to talk about it so we'll let everybody else but i mean i i can i i can understand the hesitation of someone like obama or someone like president clinton because they're sitting there even president bush and they're thinking god you know how mad would i have been if if a if if they would have called me and told me not to run you know i'd have been i get it but i mean their job, their only job, that you know, they're part of this club where their only job was to keep this nation moving forward. Right. Forward. Right. The arc of democratic government 
has always been forward in this country. It points up slowly at times, but it's always pointed up and it's always moved forward. You know, and I understand that sometimes it's been three steps forward and two steps back, but that's still one step net forward, right? So that's their job. Right. And I don't know that the candidate that he's running against can maintain that will maintain that standard he will not you know he is surrounded by people that i consider to be fascist you know and i don't think that that's what western democracy is built on what it's based on what it should be looking for and that's why i think you know president obama president clinton president bush should probably try to say something to him i mean i'm sure they can find a way to do it outside of the fucking press and all that other stuff. These are powerful people that can sneak it in. They can get it done. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, it probably... And the, and the I've heard a lot about, you know, he's really insulated and he doesn't get people talking to him that are going to tell him, you know, because he just keeps it to the family and the very, very close staff. And, all, and I get it. But I, I'm telling you, from all the books that I've ever read and everything that I've ever seen... The one phone call that a president will never turn down is from another president. I mean, you know, right, right. it's just the one that they don't not take. So that's why. Well, I, think I know that, one president he wouldn't take a call from. Well, that's <laughs> again, which is a reflection of how ridiculous things have changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I think that he would easily talk to former President Bush. I mean, why wouldn't he? Oh, of you course. Know? Of course. We didn't he like would. former President Bush. All right. You know, I didn't vote for him, but, uh, you know, if Trump's taught us anything, he certainly taught us to be nicer to people like <laughs> President Bush. Exactly, you know? exactly. You know, I mean. Yeah. Um, uh, Bree, did you hear this speech at all tonight? Uh, bits and pieces. I saw the reviews, you know, the pundits. What What are the pundits saying? Um, <clears throat> well, it depends on who you, who you talk to, you know, if it, or, or, I mean, who you want to listen to you want to listen to the people on megan kelly or do you want to listen to the people on M- msnbc you want to listen to paul begala or do you want to listen to cenk uger you know who do you want to listen well, to i would that? never listen to cenk uger he's an asshole but anyway <laughs> yeah, no kidding i'm starting to agree with you on that yeah <laughs> um uh, well, no uh, i think that uh you know the Democrats are one side, Republicans are another. The media is kind of like this rope of the, uh, you know, tug of war that they use. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, let's pile on. The good thing is Biden's getting all the press right now. So Trump is kind of squelched a little bit there. You know, when you talk about uh, it'll uh, it'll shift back. When you talk about uh, sucking the oxygen out of the room, uh, yeah, it'll be a close election. But um, right now, the edge is to Trump. But Anything can happen. That world events, you know, wag the dog. Uh, world events can come on the scene. Uh, anything can happen. But in terms of people going to Biden and telling him to step, no, that's I don't see that happening. There's only uh, two two months, three months. Well, we're no, gonna, and this I, is I, happening. I disagree with that argument. Uh, 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 John Stewart put it best. He said, you know, in England they just had their election. It took them two months. In France, they had their election. It took them only one month. I think we can do it in four months. Okay, you know we used to well, do they, it. Um, we used to do it in four months. It's mm-hmm. in um, in Britain. There, it's a law, or, or there's something. There's some. It's part of the system, um, and and it's also the case that on the BBC, you had to give equal time to the the parties. Uh, based on the yeah, vote but what I'm saying, percentage what I'm received. saying is years ago when I was growing up as a kid, I remember you had the conventions happen. Nobody really mm-hmm. politicked before the convention. They then went to the convention, found out who the standard bearers would be. And when that was all over, they started campaigning for about three to four months. And that was it. Mm-hmm. That's the way it's oh, that's the way it always was back then. Somehow we got into this whole primary thing, and then, of course, you've got the news organizations who have got to have something to talk about, so they start having people running two years ahead of time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And quite frankly, we can do it in, two, in four months. And quite frankly, you know, let's say we don't run Biden, okay? We run either Kamala Harris or we run uh, Gavin Newsom or any more Gretchen uh, 
uh, what's her name out of out of uh, uh, Detroit? Yes. Uh, uh, any of those, they will have an advantage because they only have four months to establish themselves. But likewise, the opposite party only has four months to try and get dirt on them. Where mm -hmm. we've got all the dirt we need on Donald I mean, Trump. I, I believe that we've come far enough, you know, down the line where the narrative has constantly been. Oh, we have two people that no one really likes, and they're old, and this guy's too old. He's too. That if they refreshed and gave the, and came out and said, "Okay, you know what? We've you're right. We've come to that conclusion, and now our side, the Democratic Party, is going to offer up to you this much younger, very capable person. You, you know, now Trump is the old guy. I mean, they can change the narrative if they chose to. I mean, I think I told you last week, and I still kind of believe that it, it would be, you know, if they want to do something like that, you know, they can do it. I, look, I said before, if, if if they really wanted to end Trump, then find someone to run for president and nominate a never-Trump person as their vice president. Team them up with someone that appeals to all over the country. Trump. Give everyone who Trump is in Trump control. Any party, someone to vote. What, what, did, what did you say? What did you say, Bree? Well, Trump runs the party, and he—I I don't understand how you guys are—you guys are talking about the dystopian realities. No, we're that, not talking about I'll, dystopian. I'll give you an example. You no, know, wait, wait, FM, wait, 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 FM wait, wait, hold on a second. What dystopian realities are we talking about? That Trump is going to get a never Trumper to run with him? No, 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 no. That's right? not. You did, weren't. That's we not weren't even said. listening. He. We, we talked about listening. this uh, the other night. That if the Democrats got somebody, let's say, uh, arguably uh, Gavin Newsom, and they need to have a, a guy to run as vice president, the person they have run as vice president, they should get somebody who's like a Republican mm -hmm. and a never Trumper. Because you can run a Republican on the Democratic ticket if you want oh, to, right. and well, that would. I mean, it's exciting to talk about these things, but it. I just, I, and and I'm happy, and it's great to talk about them. But realistically, this is not going to happen. No, real so, for the most part, that's not going to happen. If it isn't uh, Biden, it's going to be Kamala Harris. Okay. Yeah. That's the way it's shaping up. Uh, and but I I don't buy that that's a good idea either. Although I think she's a very competent woman, I just don't know if she's the the person you want to have in there as the standard bearer for the party at such a crucial time as this. Any other time, I'd say go ahead, give her a shot. I think maybe she can do it. But we're, we're, that's not what we're, what we're involved in here. This is not. The, it's it's the, possible at the convention the delegates could break for her. Well, they won't can't break for her because he's going to get it on the first ballot, because he's got. Didn't he say they're free? No, they're free to no, do what no, they. No, no, he has. I thought he said they're free ballot. to do what they want. No, no. Okay, then I misheard. He, he that on the first ballot. He said the convention is free to do what it wants to do, but it can't do something it can't do, which they have on the first ballot. They have to go with the primary winners, and the only primary winner the Democratic Party has. Is Joe Biden. So that's what that's all about. Yeah, but if a candidate refuses to accept nomination, they can take whatever they action can. after that. They uh, yes. I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's there's nothing. There's no rule. There's no godly command. There's nothing that stops someone different from running for president. That's it. There's not. If they're over 35 years old and a natural born citizen of the United States of America, those are the two qualifications they have to meet. Yeah. You know, yeah. everything else can be worked out through whatever mechanism needs to be done to work it out. You know, I mean, nothing prohibits it. I mean, if he decides tomorrow morning he's not going to run for president anymore, then um, they get a new person. It's, just, it, it, it's no different than if a candidate passed away during the campaign. Yeah. It's not like you go to the convention and you nominate someone and the candidate passes away and they just go, oh, we'll just cancel, you know, the November 4th election. The other person won. It's just not a okay. sporting Hold event where the other team didn't show up. Let me ask some other people some questions here. Alan, uh, did you listen to it tonight? I did. What was your opinion? I think he read everything great off the teleprompter. Well, that was that, that was the speech he gave about NATO. It, right. it was fine. And he even screwed up once on the teleprompter, but I'll give him that. Okay. You know, uh, yeah. but, but um, 
I felt, as for the rest of it, as I said, it kind of just seemed like, you know, your aging uncle at the Thanksgiving dinner table who just won't shut up, you know? And I, I just it wasn't, I didn't feel comfortable. I, I felt very uncomfortable watching it. I'd like for it to have been over. I mean, look, I um, think that, I think Joe Biden continuing to run is probably Trump's dream, and Joe Biden not running is probably Trump's nightmare. Oh, yeah. Um, delegates are not legally bound to vote for Biden and technically can vote for another candidate if they choose to do so. Not they're on the not, not on the it says they're expected. I asked for the first round ballot, can they vote Kamala? In the first round of voting, pledged delegates are expected to vote for the candidate they were pledged to during the primary process. However, these delegates are not legally bound to vote for him and can technically vote for another candidate even on the first ballot, such as Camilla Harris, if they choose to do so. So that's where that could be realistic. That's a realistic mm. possibility. Ray, um, you, you have your hand I, up. I, I'm sorry, but I need to agree with Bree because they asked him that direct question, and he said yes. They're, and his words were, yes, they're free to do whatever they want. However, they are, I know that they're loyal to me. That's exactly what he said. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. They asked him that in the press conference today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, by the way, did you notice the one big gaffe in that press conference today? Yes, yes, when, when he, when he nice called to Vice President Trump, yes. He's he nice to know our Vice President is Trump. And, and he didn't even realize that he did it, and then at the end when that reporter pointed it out, he still didn't know what the guy was talking about. Yeah. And he just said, well, ask Trump. And so, true. what did you feel? You how know, next, you... Time, next time Trump gives a speech and talks about how he's running against President Obama, I hope no. it makes the headline in the fucking Washington Post the way that that one did. Yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. Why aren't they talking why why yeah. are they talking about um Trump's endless gaffes and brain farts yeah. that he has? I mean, just because he sounds a little better doesn't mean that his brain is Listen, working any that better. In that debate, uh he lied uh what? 50 times every, was it? 50, every once every time, minute and 26 time. seconds. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, how many of you truly believe that Kamala Harris wouldn't all become the president? Because do you believe in, let's say, June, July of 20, what would it be, 2027, mm -hmm. that Biden will still be sharp as a tack in 2027? No. 20, I, you know, I doubt if he'd be so, sharp as a tack in two more years. Mm -hmm. That's my worry. Right. So. So what I think is, this is the message. Look, guys, Joe Biden's on the ticket with Kamala Harris. We've already got that set. We're kind of already going down that road. Let's go that way with the understanding that after a, about a year or so, Kamala Harris will come in. And at that moment, she's going to pick a well-respected vice presidential candidate, and we'll go from there. That's so what I think. That's, that's good to me. That's 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 what I think is the the smartest way to go. But stick first, with, I stick think with they're the, going now. But first, because first, yeah. first Biden has to win the election. Yeah. Right. But and I think he can. I think, I think he, he can. can too. I think today showed that he, even though he did sound like your uncle going on and on and on, it became very clear that he has a very deep understanding of a lot of the things that are going on in this world. Well, that's, that's well, fine. That's that. fine. <laughs> what he doesn't understand is how to communicate with the American public at this point. Well, I agree. Biden's yeah. always had a, a speech never... issue. Why don't they ever bring that up? Like, he had no, to he, overcome he, that. He had a speech issue. He, he was a stutterer. But he overcame right, yeah. it. He overcame it. And if you go back and just look at Biden, older. Biden in 2020 when he was running, it's like night and day. It's like night yeah. and day. But we've yeah. we've become yeah. used to Trump, and hit. You could say the same thing about Trump. Compare him now to the way he was ten years ago. It's not even close. He had a good vocabulary. Listen, the fact that America has even considered him for president again disappoints me greatly in this country. Okay. Mm -hmm. and but you know, if the Democrats were smart, they wouldn't be going after Biden. They would they would increase the pressure on the stupidity of Donald Trump instead of the stupidity of Joe Biden. And it's so typical of the would. Democratic Party. You think the Republicans would be doing this to Trump? No way. No way in no. hell. 
but I mean, we're destroying well, ourselves again, look, as usual. Look at the, the name of the party tells you that exact reality. Democratic democracy, Republican republic. What do we live in? Is the USA a democracy or is it a, or is it a federal republic? You know, it's a and mixture. You see the way it depends. That they, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a democratic republic. It de and it depends on which <laughs> government you're talking, whether you're talking about local government or federal or state, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's all complicated. Well, I, what will happen is what I said. Biden will still stay on there. He'll get, and he's getting a lot of he needs to turn this coverage into positive because he's got all the coverage right now. It's amazing, actually, if you think about it, because Trump usually dominates all this. Uh, so it'll be Biden Harris, and and the the tacit understanding is, if you vote for Biden, you're really voting for Kamala Harris, uh, and because she will whether whether you believe it or not, she's going to be president, if if you vote for Biden, that's the reality. And if you can accept that, go to the polls. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, you know, it's uh, who's Trump going to pick? Maybe hmm? Vance, or uh, is he going to pick uh, Scott in uh, South Carolina? David or is he going to pick? Uh... He'll pick a yes man or a yes woman. David yeah. Duke. Yeah. David Duke. <laughs> Ramaswamy or whatever his name. Is. Yeah. Well. Possibility. Yeah. No, he's too brown. Too brown. <laughs> it's just you know. It's just. <laughs> You know, you put it best a couple of nights ago, uh, uh, Josh, and it's just sad that we're even in this pickle, you know? I mean, we yeah. should have two fresh, really articulate people running against each other and be presented with a real choice. But here it's like lesser of two evils? Come on. Our whole, our whole culture, our whole nation is based this way. Let me give you, I can give you so many examples. When I was, uh, and this one relates to radio, Alex, when I was growing up, mm -hmm. you, and it's still today, they, have, they play the same songs over and over. Now you can come in and say, well, why don't they play, why don't they play this? Why don't they play that? Why don't they do something new? Because they got a lot of money locked into this system. Okay, you go into McDonald's and you, you don't want Coke, and Pep, Coke or Pepsi. You want a, uh, a great knee high or you want a root beer. You can't get it. Why? Because they've already determined this is what sells. This is how our system works. So this is what you're going to do. And you can't just you can't just wake up one morning. So we got to change everything because that's those systems are in place. And I think this is the perfect example that shows you. Yeah, our system is is it's all the flaws are there. And I think Donald Trump has really exposed that. But we can't you can't as much as we would want to change takes time and it's slow. You know, when I when I was in graduate school, uh, I used to go to the co-op and I would buy seventh generation, um, uh, you know, uh, laundry detergent because mm -hmm. it doesn't have phosphates. And I would say, you know, if everybody used this, our waters would be clean. It, it, it took about 15 years and now you can go to Walmart, you can get seventh generation, but it didn't happen overnight. You know, so slowly, you know, things, the, the, the problem is, we, that we do have issues that need to be addressed, but we just can't address them so quickly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you were mentioning about how we used to play the, uh, the same 40 records over and over again on radio stations. Do you know still how, do. You, they still do. Yeah, but you know how that, be, how that happened? Yeah, because people went into the mm. diner. And they put a nickel in the jukebox. That's box, right. And they kept playing the same songs. That's right. A guy and by the name of Todd I, yeah. Stores and Gordon McClendon were sitting in a in a restaurant, and this um, mm -hmm. in a diner, and uh, this uh, waitress kept going over and putting money into the jukebox and playing the same five songs over and over again, and they thought to themselves, "Why is she doing that?" And then they kind of thought about it, and they started a whole format based on playing the same forty songs over yeah. and over again. And back during legacy media, mm -hmm. the time of traditional media, that was the way to go. Yep. Uh, it's no longer the way, but we still, it still goes on. Yeah. It's amazing. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> it certainly does. There's mm -hmm. Tony. We got Tony here. Oh here we go. Yeah, here we go again. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Be good tonight, At Tony. At least I'm in the Hilton tonight. Don't get me in trouble. I got a call. No, I, I, I got a call today from the Secret Service. 
I got a call from the Secret Service. And they said, we heard there was some guy on your show. Who, and could you tell us who he is and where we can find him? And I told them, no, I never heard of the guy. I didn't know about this. I better get off the line. My goodness. You know, I was listening to you guys. And and Bree was making a couple of good points. And I didn't hear the whole thing with you guys. See, here's a question I was going to pose to you guys. They should just stay with Biden then, because if you think about it, if you if you want Harris, let's say he steps down, the ticket should be secure then, because if he steps down, you got Harris then. So a vote for Joe would be a vote for Harris. That's what it is. So then don't they have confidence then in that ticket? Well, I mean, they should have confidence in the ticket. But well, the, I do. You know. That's too. the message they, they, they need to send. send. You know. I mean, I quite frank, quite mm -hmm. frankly, I I don't know if anybody has shown me where Kamala Harris has the chops to be president. Well, uh, she's a very talented, very uh, accomplished woman, uh, and I have great deal of respect for her. But that doesn't mean she can be president of the United States, you know. And she's going to have to be. I would prefer somebody. I would prefer somebody who was a governor like Gretchen mm. Whitmer, for instance, because that's closer to being president than any job you're going to get. You don't hear about very many senators or congressmen running for president, you know. And when they do, they never win, usually. You'd have to go Kennedy. Uh, well, we had, we had Ob Obama won, but he had barely... JFK. Uh, JFK, and that's it. The rest of them yeah. were either governors mm. or uh, what, what else? Uh, Sometimes I think that have we had any recently, Josh, who were just people, not in politics, mm -hmm. who suddenly Ron, ran? Dwight Eisenhower. Well, I, I, we, uh, well, Reagan we you could say Senate. Ronald Reagan in a way, he was but he was oh, came from being what? governor too. He, he, here's a question I actually don't know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. To. Alan has his hand up. Yes, Alan. If Kamala ran, California for the first time in a long time would vote red. She was not popular here. She was not very popular in San Francisco. But she's not going to run. Uh, 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 as opposed to your argument about that, she has the reputation of having been a very good attorney general and uh, a district attorney of San Francisco. And I don't know where you've gotten that impression because I've heard quite the opposite. Well, I, 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 I read it in the paper. I, well, that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it on the news. Uh, I, I know people that work for the city of San Francisco, and she wasn't a very good prosecutor there. Well, then how did um, she win the attorney general's office if she was so disliked? No, nobody else was running. Well, who? It must be somebody running. She doesn't have to get uh, running against somebody. That, what? What would you What'd you Alex, say, Alan? Alex. Well, Bree's trying to say something. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah, Bree. Well, I, I wanted to get your impression on the nine or ten percentage points that RFK Jr. seems to be polling at. Who is he taking from, and is this going to be another Gore Bush? I think he's taking from Trump. If you want my opinion, yeah. I don't okay. think most Democrats like him very much. Nope. You know, mainly because, among other things, they look upon him as trying to be a spoiler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems to be what's happening. Yeah, but his own family doesn't like him. Well, that doesn't matter, <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, but they're died in the world Democrat. You know, I mean, I think he's. Uh, I, I I think his brain has been eaten by worms. But anyway, uh, he you know he uh, he is just not. Uh, uh, I think is pulling from the from the Trump group, you know. He, okay. He's a little bit too, how can we put it, wacko to appeal to mm -hmm. most Democrats. Most Democrats consider themselves much more uh, level-headed than that. But, you know, I don't, I don't know that he's pulling that much. I, I don't hear any, And to begin with, he can pull all he wants to in a national poll. The fact is he isn't on the ballot in very many states. So he's got to win those too in order to be president, and he isn't uh, isn't running in those not. states. 
and he can't find a party who is registered in all those states who's willing to run him. You know. But maybe it works the other way this time, then. Maybe RFK Jr. helps to get Biden elected. Well, I mean, it could be. But, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to take any of those chances. I'd like, to, I'd, like, I'd like to see a candidate who I think can win, you know, and who can take— By the uh, way, we don't hear much from Gore and Clinton. No, well, no, we, we don't, don't hear don't. from Gore much at all anyway. Mm. And yeah. we don't hear much from Clinton lately. You yeah. know, and I mean, I'm talking about in the last couple of years. He kind of seems nope. to have disappeared. Yeah. And so is Hillary. We don't. You don't hear Hillary yeah. making, you know, talking much about any of this. Uh, of course. How old is she? God, I think she's in her <laughs> late seventies. Late seventies. Yeah. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Echo. How old is uh, Hillary Clinton? Sorry, I didn't catch that. I said. How, about? Hillary Clinton. How old is she? Echo, how old is Hillary Clinton? I hate when it does that. Hillary Clinton is 76 years old. 76. Wow. 76, yeah. Bad. Yeah, that's what I thought. Good. Gee, competitive. Uh, by the way, uh, I thought of an interesting fact the other day. I've had lunch or dinner with most of these people uh, that are involved. I, I mean, or met them. I've met Trump. I've had, I had dinner with Donald Trump Jr. I've had lunch with Bill Clinton. I've had... Lunch with Hillary Clinton. Uh, I never met the Biden. Wait a minute. Did you Obama actually go out to lunch Clinton? with them, or were you at a lunch yes. with them? I was at. Well, with Hillary, it was it was a uh, just a few of us um, when she was running for Senate in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, with Bill, it was a larger. It was at Hofstra University, and I was two tables away from him. With Donald Trump Jr., I was at his table. Um, who else? Yeah, but yeah, meeting so, Donald I mean, Trump Jr. isn't exactly like meeting anybody. Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and and Donald Trump, it was just a handshake. He, he thanked me for uh, coming down to apply to be on The Apprentice. It was at the <laughs> Waldorf Astoria in New York. Oh, I thought it was for your 25 cent donation to his candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Bill online in front of him. <laughs> oh, boy. What a world we live in. We're even questioning this, you know? I mean, yeah. it'd just be nice if we had a better choice, you know? I would really like a real good race between two really intelligent people, you know? And, and we don't seem to be uh, ever getting that anymore. That's why I would like, at the very least, to see Kamala running instead of Joe, so that we get somebody younger running. And she's no spring chicken, you know? Um, I'd like to get Joan, you know, Joan Soda or Ellen Pay at Adam McDonald's, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, but do you remember? Do you want to? Do you remember how um, how refreshing, if you think back, it was to have Biden, uh, to have uh, Obama as president? Yeah. I mean, it was refreshing. Oh, yeah. If if he could have just waited, you could have had Hillary come in, then Obama. You know. Well, yeah, that that was a lot of people said that would have been the best uh, possible yeah. thing of all worlds, but. Unfortunately, uh, but, but Obama won, and he did, I think he, in his second term, he did a good job, okay, mm -hmm. you know, but it uh, took time. Yeah. It took time, you know, so, anyway. Kamala Harris is only 59. Kamala Harris only 59? That's, yeah. that's pretty good, you know. That's pretty yeah. old. Quite frankly, I, I liked Obama's age for, vi for vitality. For the yeah. job, yeah. Yeah. you know, it was the perfect age. Forty-five is a great, good age. Yeah, he was young. And you have enough, mm -hmm. you have enough uh, uh, politics behind you that you can run for president. The only problem that Obama had was that he had only been a senator for like two years before he decided to run for president, and he really didn't know how the, the Senate worked. They, they, there was a thing I saw, a That's picture a of him thing. walking down the steps of the, of the Senate building, and it said, how can he possibly know how to fight a system he hasn't even been part of for a while? You know, he was oh, two, two years, and then he was running for president. So he had to learn while he earned. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't until was his second— president. What? 
he was the best president that I can remember. I like who Obama. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think he restored dignity to that office. He was intelligent, but he wasn't overbearing. He could do politics, but he didn't seem political. I just liked him. I yeah. liked him. Yeah. Uh, Alan? So when Bill Clinton was running, speaking of somebody that had never been in, mm -hmm. other than a governor of a small state, when Ross Perot, when they were doing the debates, Ross Perot said, electing Bill Clinton is like uh, taking a clerk from 7-Eleven and making them the CEO of Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and look where look where look where Clinton went, and look where Ross Perot went. So yeah. Well, yeah. Perot did say that one thing that he hit on. Remember the sucking of the jobs with the NAFTA Act. He was right about that. Some of the stuff one thing. Perot said. Did you speak was, English, uh, Tony? Yeah, I said uh, when Ross Perot said the sucking of the jobs because of NAFTA. Yeah. He was right yeah, about yeah, that. Did, did you understand me, Alan? Yeah, I we did. understood you. I did. Okay. Thank you. I think you, Ross Perot. I, I didn't understand the word NAFTA. I think Sorry. Ross Perot was the biggest ripoff artist of all time. Yeah. You know. Ross for boss. But what did you Here's think? Here's the Josh? deal. <laughs> what did you What did you think, Josh? Here's the deal. What was your opinion uh, of Ross Perot? Uh, I was not a fan. I mean, I just don't think that. Again, he's just another one of those people that is successful at something other than politics. The people just assume that he would naturally be successful at politics. And I have no idea why people have continually made that assumption for as long as I can remember. And then one minute he was running, and the next minute he wasn't running, and the next minute he was running again. again. I mean, what was that all about? Yeah, and he, and he had a very strange person as his vice presidential yeah. Pick and I don't remember who the guy wasn't. Name was. He like a guy from the Navy or something. Oh, uh, he was. I don't remember. And talk about old. He was very old. He's the guy that during the vice presidential debate said, "Could you repeat that? I didn't have my hearing aid on." <laughs> <laughs> I remember that? <laughs> I mean, oh god! You know, it, it was a very. You know, I mean, where we are, but you know, I gotta, I gotta cut out Alex, my daughter. Or I gotta take her into the city. So okay, yeah, Bree. Uh, are you? Are you? Where are you right now, Bree? Are you in? Uh... I, I'm in KL. You're where? Yeah. I'm in Kuala Lumpur, oh, Malaysia. Okay. I just got back from Bangkok um, mm -hmm. a couple of days ago. And uh, I have to go back to um, Manila and Bangkok, a couple other places in the next month mm -hmm. or two. Bangkok? It's supposed to be in no India you? this weekend, but I'm not right. going there. Okay. Hey, Kay, see you later, Bree. Right. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. This is amazing the world we live in. He's in uh, he's in Kuala Lumpur, he's and he looks like he's next door. Yeah, maybe you know? maybe Trump will pick a, a wild card <laughs> vice president, Mike Lindell, the guy that owns My Pillow. <laughs> oh God! Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. There's another wild. Might be better than Mike Lindell. <laughs> yeah. Well. You know, I don't. I think. I think. Quite frankly, I think he's probably going to pick J.D. Vance, if you want my opinion. Uh, but you know, is Vance, the guy that's black, is he the guy? No, no Vance is black. the guy who wrote "Hillbilly Elegy." But the, but the other guy in in the southern <laughs> part of the country, he's a black man, right? A senator. Wait a minute, I just got no, a laugh off of that. You know, he did write <laughs> "Hillbilly Elegy." It was the name of the book he was known for. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The movie that was a good movie. Yeah, was that was J D. Vance. Oh, okay. it was all about his time growing up with Glenn Close, <laughs> with his mother, <laughs> and they were all hillbillies, you know. Yeah. So. Wow. They really, they really weren't. I mean, he's from the exact same part of the country I'm from. It's it's not. Hillbilly is totally different than what he was. I mean, well, he, but he tried to sell he's the from idea. He's white trash. Okay, we'll just go. He's on white and, trash. Oh, exactly. okay. I mean, you know, Appalachia and that shit is two totally different. Yeah. You know, I mean, the town that I was born and live in is the foothills of Appalachia. He's from fucking Middletown. You know, I mean, drive. 15 minutes from there, you're at Great American Ballpark, which is downtown Cincinnati. I mean, uh, come on. It's, you know. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. your family was white trash doesn't mean they were hillbillies. I mean. <laughs> There's a big difference between white trash and hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hillbillies know how to make illegal liquor. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and real fast cars. And they're missing their two front teeth. Absolutely. Yeah. You never see them trying to eat corn on the cob. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'd be surprised to hear that out of uh, Bree, that he really liked Obama as much as he did. Because Bree doesn't usually would not, if you asked me how Bree might feel about Barack Obama, I would have said he didn't like him or something. And he really liked him, you know? I think between him and Bill Clinton, they were our best president well, in my lifetime. I think that in my lifetime, mm -hmm. Obama was the most soothing, okay? He was the one I felt most yep. comfortable with. Yep. And felt I, he, I felt he had the best interest of the country at heart. And when he was through being president... Boom, boom, that's it. I'm no longer president. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What about Ike? What about Eisenhower? Eisenhower, um, uh, I have a great story about Eisenhower. My father played at the Republican Convention. I worked the Republican Convention, and he was working it as well, but he was a violinist. And what they did is they had a thing at the Republican Convention where they hired, how, how, do you, how many letters in Eisenhower? E I S. Uh, is E I S E N nine uh, nine okay I think there's not nine letters so they had nine ten. they had nine violinists and they all had a letter on their back that spelled out Eisenhower <laughs> <laughs> and he one of the guys one of the musicians looked over at my father and said uh, you know uh, I don't know if we really like the idea of having a name a letter on our back spelling Eisenhower, he said, feel good about it. If they decided to spell Ike, uh, six of us would be out of work. Uh, I, w I was never a big Eisenhower fan, you know? Oh, okay. I mean, he, he, he got, there's a good example of somebody who never was a senator, governor, uh, uh, general. congressman. He's a general. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. he was very popular because he had come out of World War II, and he was a very mm -hmm. good general, very good general. I mean, D-Day was his whole thing, you know, uh, and uh, he had a fairly good reputation uh, because of that. But that didn't mean that he could run a country. Again, you know, the job of president... I don't think he cared. Huh? I don't think he cared. I think he did. Although I, I think know, he was I kind think of... he was very calm. Oh, well, I think he was kind of forced into it by the Republican Party, uh, who was saying, oh, please run, please run, you're our sure shot, you know. As we had Eisen, we had uh, FDR for four years, and then we had Truman for another, what, two years? Was it Truman? Uh, four years? How many years was Truman uh, he was seven years president. He was yeah, seven. seven, seven he, 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 wait, wait a minute. But how many how many terms did he serve? He served, I think, three years after the death of FDR, and yeah, then maybe he another four years. and then another four years. So he had he done seven years. Uh, so they had gone for a long time with the Democrats being in power, and they really wanted to get somebody who was a you know, who was a Republican in power, and they went and got Eisenhower, and they kind of... But Eisenhower did get reelected, though. Yes. Right? Yeah, he yes. did. Yeah. yeah. Even in spite of the fact that he had a heart attack and one other thing. What, what, what was the other thing, Josh? He had a heart attack, and he had one other big problem. He had an affair with his secretary or something. Ooh. Eisenhower? Oh, that's right, yeah. Eisenhower, yeah. Eisenhower did, and so did FDR. Well, FDR, come on. You know. Yeah. Um, that wheelchair. His his uh, mistress was with him when he died. Yeah. And yeah. then she, they had to get her out of out of. She was down at the hot springs. Where's that place where where he used to have the place for kids with uh, polio to go down and swim and so yeah. on and so forth. Uh, he died the there, and they immediately moved her out fast because you know, um, Eleanor had to show up and claim the body yeah. but you know by then they didn't have much of a marriage anyway so he know. was quite a handsome young lady hmm he was a handsome lady. who eleanor roosevelt <laughs> yeah no, donald trump maybe one of the most <laughs> unattractive women in history yeah that's why i said she was handsome <laughs> <laughs> handsome yeah 
Yeah. She had a good personality. Yeah. Yeah. But she was a she was bright. You know, she was yeah. smart as a whip. And right. the kind of things she involved herself in after her husband died, I thought were exemplary. Am I right, Josh? She yeah. did a, she was a pretty good uh, ex uh former first lady. Mm. You know. She was a very intelligent woman and uh, you know, um they had a complicated marriage as people are entitled to do. He had female companions and she had a many female companions as well she had a relationship with a with a female a, a member of the press for a very long time yeah. um you know they spent a lot of time together uh it was more than likely romantic you know it was more than a friendship you know so uh they had a complicated you know, set up there, which you know, like I said, people are entitled to do. You know, and and another and another thing that has really nothing to do with serving as president of the United States. You know, and that's right. You know, Eisenhower had a, a a pretty strong presidency. You know, the problem is, is a lot of it isn't too recognized because it was pretty boring because a lot of it was foreign policy related, but. He did have a lot of good successes for policy-wise, uh, keeping the peace, you know, after that he'd help win, you know, which was not an easy job for the first, you know, decade or so after yeah. the World War II. I mean, NATO was very fragile. Uh, and he had the Korean War to deal with, didn't he? Well, things like that, right, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. and that's the and thing, the beginning, yeah. another... Just keeping another war from breaking out that was larger and, you know, kind of making sure that the United States got to a point of good military standing for deterrence. You know, mm -hmm. that that's kind of the time that we move toward, you know, deterrence and containment, you know, of, of enemies and, and, and things like that. You know, getting the nuclear programs, submarines, weapons, uh, making the military larger and not just because he'd been a military man but because he truly believed like i do that deterrence you know is what could keep another war from starting you know so well as he so. was he was a general and we find that most generals in in reality hate war you know uh and and he was very much against it and did everything he could to prevent another one from happening yeah he didn't want to but we, but he had the korean war happen well, it was already going before he yeah. became president. Was it? Was it going before he became president? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Truman authorized the first, you know, bit there. So, yeah. But I mean, uh, but they tried to keep it within their policy of containment, which was, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, basically just get the Koreans back in their box. I mean, we'd love to get more, but I think everyone understood that wasn't really going to happen. You know what? America has tried to do rather successfully since then is, is contain people and the times when they've sort of overstepped with that it hasn't worked out very well like Vietnam for example you know uh, you know I mean, don't you forget it wasn't problem. you could argue it wasn't successful in Korea I get it I mean because you know we have two Koreas and the whole thing and all that well but, it was under Eisenhower also that we didn't uh, uh, that we had the uh, House on American as act <laughs> House Un-American Activities yes. Subcommittee and all those things going on, and the red channels and so on. And he didn't which speak he didn't out against for, that. You know, right. You know, which he didn't care for, but, you know, presidents aren't capable of controlling, you know, everybody at all times. I mean, <laughs> there are powerful politicians outside the president, and McCarthy was certainly one of them. Yeah, yeah. And he had his enablers, you know, like every, every other despot, you know. Yeah. And, hey! And don't forget about the interstate highway. Eisenhower did that. Yeah. Did a lot of, you know, I'm saying they did a lot of boring. And domestic. don't forget, don't forget the the uh, national parks. That was Teddy Roosevelt. See how far back I go. This is the first time I've heard the music. That's right, because we solved yes, the problem last night. Okay. Right on. <laughs> anyway, I I want to thank everybody for being with us tonight. Uh, on a rather auspicious evening in which every time the president now speaks anywhere, people want to see him to see if he, if he, if he, if he can get out a coherent sentence. 
And since I can't, I cannot be president. Anyway, I want to thank Charlie for being with us tonight. Thank you, Charlie. Also, I should thank Bree, even though he's not here any longer. Uh, let's uh, also thank Alan for being here. Josh, two nights in a row. This has been wonderful. This has been terrific. Uh, Jeff, good having you here. Always very nice. Uh, oh, by the way, Ray, you should call more often. Okay, thank yeah, you. We enjoy your presence. And, of course, Tony, who was a good boy tonight. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, give a big, uh, a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye as well. There they go, folks. That's the citizen panel for tonight. Um, we'll have another citizen panel again tomorrow night right here. Next, it's Amy Manuel. She's here with the intersection. She'll be taking your calls at uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I will see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.